In this video, we're going to be talking all about how the Plan 2 pension works in the state of Washington. So if you're a TERS, SERS, or PERS employee in Washington State, this video is for you. We're going to be talking all about how that Plan 2 pension works. I'll give you the exact formula so you can calculate it yourself, as well as the ages that you need to hit or years you need to work in order to collect those benefits in full. And if you stick with me to the end of this video, I will also show you what the downfalls are with this plan and how you can best prepare a plan around it. My name is Ethan Miko, the co-founder of Scenic Financial, and I specialize in working with Washington State employees to build better financial lives. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos every week. Now, without further ado, I'm going to flip over my screen so I can walk you through how this pension plan works. Looking at plan two, it's pretty straightforward. So it's what we call a defined benefit plan. So the way this one works is you're going to get 2% for every single year that you work for the school district or any you know public employer that you're on plan two with. So it's 2% for every single year you work with them. Now these years are full uh, service credit years. So if you're in a part-time contract, you probably only got half a year or something like that. And the important thing to know with this one is they don't cap the number of years that you work. Unlike in plan one where they capped you off at 30 years, this one there is no cap. So if you wanna work 35 or 40 years, you'll get full pension credits for that for those years worked. So as an example, if you worked you know 10 years in the plan two system, you'd be entitled to 20%. If you work 30 years, it's 60%. And this is gonna be guaranteed for the rest of your life. Now, what are those percentages based on for this particular plan? They're gonna base that percentage on the average of your top five years of income, they do have to be consecutive, so in order. And now they'll do this for you automatically, so it's something you have to calculate yourself, but if you wanted to get a rough estimate of what you can expect in the future, this is the formula you use to do that. A couple of things to note here is even though we're gonna get our top five years of income, most times they're gonna be our last five years, but that's not always gonna be the case. So if you worked as, as say like an administrator, or you made more money in a different district in the past in a different job, those are the years they're gonna take. So that also means that if you were to take a part-time position or step down from a position to slowly phase out, as you get closer to retirement, those years aren't gonna hurt your pension because you're already locked in your top five years. Basically the full pension formula, but that's not always what you're gonna get. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. So as far as when can I start getting this benefit, it's really gonna depend on the number of years you worked and how old you are. So under the current law, if you have at least 30 years of service, you can start drawing your benefits in full at age 62. Now that doesn't mean you have to work till age 62, that's just when you're entitled to the full benefits. So you have 30 years of service, but you're only 60 years old, you could indeed retire and just hold off collecting your benefits, and there's not gonna be any kind of penalty for that. So that's always an option. Or if you want to collect your benefits, you could do it too. It would just be at a reduced rate. Now, if you have at least 30 years of service, the reduction they take for going early is much less of a hit than in someone trying to collect early that doesn't have 30 years of service. So 30 years of service is really the magic number here. Oftentimes, if someone has 30 years of service and they're like 60 years old, it actually makes sense to start collecting pension at age 60 and take a little bit of reduction. And the reason being is the reduction for going two years early, once you have 30 years, is only about a 5% reduction and if you do the math on it, your break even is somewhere in your late 80s. So oftentimes it just makes a little more sense that way if you can financially afford it or maybe you just want to transition out of education or go into a different industry or just do something different. You could definitely do that and collect your pension at 60 with a small reduction or you just don't touch it and you'll get your full benefit in a couple of years. Now, for those of you that don't have 30s of service, your full age to collect your pension is going to be age 65. But keep in mind, you also don't have to work till 65 to get the benefit. You can retire really at any time you want to and just hold off collecting as long as you're vested. Now, the vesting period in Plan 2 is just five years of service. Any five years, they don't have to be consecutive, really. So as long as you have five years of service locked in into the Plan 2 system, you're going to be entitled to a pension at some point in the future. Most people that have less than 30 years, starting to collect your benefit before age 65 doesn't really work out a lot of times because the penalty is much steeper, often in excess of 10% per year you go early. So if you're in this boat, we often recommend either working till 65 or holding off collecting until 65 so you don't take that penalty. One extra note though, 
As, as it currently stands, if you're hired after May 1st of 2013, your full retirement age is going to be age 65, regardless of the number of years worked. So if you're hired after that date, it doesn't matter how many years you work, whether you work 30 years, 35 years, or 40 years, you have to be at least 65 to be entitled to your full benefit. So the rules really aren't favorable for those new hires. However, there is some legislature pending that seeks to change that. And when that comes through, I'll be sure to make a video and let everybody know about that. Plan 2 is funded from both your employer and yourself. Say about 7% as of the recording of this video into your plan. The state can increase that and they usually do every couple of years. So over time, you might have to pay more and more money into this plan. However, I really still think it's a good deal because you're going to get a guaranteed paycheck for the rest of your life. And you don't have to worry about the stock market or investing or any of that kind of trouble. And it's just really easy living when you have a guaranteed paycheck coming in. So I'm really a big fan of the way Plan 2 works. So Plan 2 also comes with a cost of living adjustment. Now this doesn't really affect you until you actually go into retirement and start collecting it. But just know that over the years, they are going to increase your pension payout between 0 and 3%. It's really not going to be a raise. It's just really meant to keep up with inflation. So don't expect to really make any extra money off of that. Now earlier I mentioned that that full benefit formula up here in the bold isn't what most people are going to get. And that's because there are survivorship options that you can also take as well. So that formula up top is what they call the full benefit formula. And really it's attached to your life only. So as soon as you pass away, your pension is gone. So if you're going to retire and you have a spouse that you want to pass the pension on to, you're not going to take that option there. If you're single and you go to retire, the only option you can take is that full benefit formula. So for those people going into retirement with a spouse, you're gonna elect one of three different survivorship options. And those options are gonna reduce the amount of income you're gonna get per month, permanently throughout your retirement. And what you're doing there is really buying insurance from the state. So should something happen to you, your spouse is gonna get either all of your pension, half of it or two thirds of it for the rest of their life. Now, if your spouse were to predecease you, the state will automatically change it and bump you up to option one, the full benefit formula. So you will see an increase in your pension. Plan two is a great plan as we just went over. However, there is more that needs to be done to make sure you're setting up for a successful retirement. Some of the downfalls that we see in plan two is because it's a guaranteed paycheck, there is no savings component to it. So should something come up and you need additional funds in retirement, this plan doesn't support that. It's just a fixed paycheck, which is nice for that security and consistency of income. But when things come up in the future, which we know they will, there's no extra money to draw off of. Or say you wanted to retire early and you needed to get by for a couple of years so you don't have to dip into this pension. If you don't have any retirement savings saved up, that's probably not going to be an option. Setting up an outside retirement account to save into on a consistent monthly basis to build up that pot of money for the future is always going to be a good idea and it's going to give you more control over when you can retire and your income that you can get from your retirement in the future. If you guys found some value in this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and also share it with a friend. Also in the description below, there's a link to my free masterclass where I give a high level overview of how your state pension plans work, the savings options available, and the hidden tax traps that are going to hit most people in their retirement. So if you want to learn more about that, check that out. And if you're trying to figure out what other savings options are available to you so you can save alongside your plan too, go ahead and check out this video I made over here to learn more about that. And remember that your future depends on what you do today.